Hi everybody, this is Dr. Dan Puperi, and this is the third video in a series where we're learning how to collect my ECG data over the internet and display it in LabVIEW. And so where we finished off last time was we collected the data over our TCP port, we made a simple waveform chart, we edited it so it looks good, and now we want to start thinking about that signal conditioning and signal processing. So LabVIEW allows it to do that. Um, I'm not going to show you everything you could do, right? There's, this is a chance for you to explore and learn on your own and figure out all the cool things. But I do want to show you an example of filtering so that you know where to find the filters because it's not always obvious what you have to do. Okay, so our data is coming back across um, point by point. And so that's the trick. And we're going to use this signal processing but instead of using all these other filters that are out there, we need to make sure we start with this point by point filter. Okay, so I will go to a point by point filter. I'll just choose a Butterworth filter. Again, you guys can look and explore what all these filters do, but I'll start with a simple Butterworth filter. Um, so I'm gonna first expand our while loop a little bit so we can fit the Butterworth filter in there. So I'm going to make a high pass filter. That's the first thing we should do um, with our data because we know there's some um, DC offset that we definitely want to get rid of. Uh, and so in order to do that, you can see there's inputs on this high pass filter. There's the X, which is our data. There's the sampling frequency, which in this case, we're going to create a constant for that because we know that our sampling frequency is 400 Hertz. That's what I told you I sampled at. Um, then there's two actual inputs for high cutoff frequency and low cutoff frequency. So if you're designing a high pass filter, you will use the high cutoff frequency. If you're designing a low pass filter, you'll use the low cutoff frequency. Okay, and the way we decide what filter we're using is making a constant on this filter type. So I'm going to create a constant. And so instead of low pass, we want to choose high pass for this. Move it over here. And so for our high cutoff frequency, create a constant. And I'm going to go ahead and filter. You know, I'll just set it to point 0.1 maybe. Just so we have just a little bit to get rid of that DC offset. Um, the order of the filter, I'm going to create a constant for that. So most of your filters that we talked about in class when we were doing electronic filters with our active or passive filters, were first order filters. And so they degrade the, the signal outside the cutoff band um, at negative 20 decibels per decade. If we have a second order filter, that makes it degrade at negative 40 decibels per decade. We can increase the order uh, as much as we want, but then we also have to worry about like some filtering artifacts come in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this as the default at two for now. And then all the only other thing we need to do is just have our filter data. And so we can compare filtered versus unfiltered. I'm going to go ahead and create another waveform chart on here. Stretch this thing out. Again, we go through all the stuff to make this look good. I'm going to try to do this quickly because um, you can get all that from the previous video. Uh, make sure we have the same number of points, 2,000. Our X scale, again, we want to make sure we get the right factor in here. Zero to five seconds, make it look the same. Okay, and then our Y scale, I guess. I'm gonna actually leave our Y scale so we can see the zero so that we can see that the uh, filter does actually work. Okay, so I'm gonna actually go up here and do the same thing first. So for Y, so we went from 0.4 to 0.8 on that. Um, show the scale. So on here. Okay, instead of 0.4 to 0.8, I'm going to go just a little bit below to just, so it's still that 0.4 difference. Um, but we'll be able to see that. And I just want to add a, a decimal point there. 
Okay, we're also going to have to do the same thing where we put our history at zero on this so I can create a property node, history data, change it to write, constant zero, and now I can wire my filtered X into this waveform. Okay, so I think that will work. I think we have everything. Oh, of course it didn't work. Oh, see, what I didn't do is wire the X in. So let me go ahead. We want to make sure it's getting this data. Oops. So I can just make a branch on that there. And so let's run this now. And so you can see the filter does have some startup issues, I guess we'd call it. But eventually, we're going to get to where it is now centering this around zero. It's filtering. Um, at 0.1 hertz where we set it to. Um, and so the DC component now is approximately zero, whereas we did have some DC signal before. Okay, so this is how you can filter your data. Again, you're gonna probably add a low pass filter after that. It's the same exact process. Um, you will think about what you want to display, how you want to filter, and how you want to process your data.